Hello, this is Pastor Bella, Alex Nosage, Lagos, Nigeria. Good evening, God girls. It's been an interesting week. Tonight, we are going to wrap up this wonderful week and also the story of Prophetess Deborah, wife, warrior, worshiper. All right, we're going to wrap up this story with the second woman that was needed in this great event in the chapter of when Prophetess Deborah was the female judge in Israel. God did not only use her, but he raised up another woman to assist her in his magnificent purpose. We are discussing Jael. And Jael, I call her the brave one. Yes, it was a great act of bravery for this woman to step into the purpose of her creation. Yes, she was created to take out the enemy of Israel. Just as Prophetess Deborah was created and purposed to be the only female judge in the history of Israel, there was someone else. Jael was created to fulfill this purpose. We know her when studying history because she fulfilled her purpose. So this is an encouragement to each and every one of you tonight. God has created you for a great purpose. It can be for just a moment that God has created you for, for just one moment. And you need to fulfill it. You need to do it. You need to be fully, totally, and uh, magnificently focused on that moment that God has called you. There's a moment that the spotlight is on you. There's a moment that God will create for you. Do not fail in that moment. So, Jael is the brave one. As much as Prophetess Deborah was the female judge and she prophesied it and she went to the battlefield, she needed someone to actually carry out her prophecy. And this is also a lesson to each and every one of us. No matter how gifted you are, you can do everything. And we know Prophetess Deborah was fully loaded. Oh, she was a prophetess. She was a wife. She was a judge. She was a warrior. She was a worshiper. I mean, come on. She was fully loaded. But God raised someone else to finish up this time in history when the children of Israel went to God and cried out for God to intervene and deliver them from 20 years of oppression. So, the captain of the army, the Canaanite army, his name was Sisera. And from yesterday's teaching, where we stopped, God had given the children of Israel a victory. Now, Barak who was the captain of the Israeli army, had chickened out when Prophetess Deborah told him that this battle was going to be victorious. He chickened out and said, um, but can you please uh, go with me to the battlefront? And because he said that, Prophetess Deborah prophesied that God was going to raise a woman and the victory would go to the woman. All right. And with Jael, Jael was the woman that was raised. She was the one that was going to fulfill this prophecy. So in the book of Judges chapter four and verse nine is when prophetess Deborah tells Barak, the captain of the Israeli army and says, I'm going to go with you, Barak. But nevertheless, the journey that you take will not be for your honor. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And that's all she said. We didn't know who the woman was, but we know that she was a prophetess and a very valid one. Because exactly what prophetess Deborah prophesied is what came to pass. So they go off to the battlefield and God, of course, God is right there in the battle with them. And 
it's awesome. The captain, his army, everyone's just running away because <laughs> God is in this battle. So it's victory. And it's kind of shocking for them because it's been 20 years that they have been successfully oppressing the children of Israel. And right now, the table has turned. And uh, the time of successful oppression is over. <laughs> God has chosen to intervene. So what is your battle? Go in with God and you will be victorious. Repent before Him. Repent of your pride. You know, sometimes you may not have deliberately, consciously sinned against God, but you have sinned by not letting Him have His way. You have sinned by not surrendering. You've tried to do things your way. So when you want God to win the battle for you, you have to repent before Him. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for trying to do things my way. Please, I need you with me in this battle, and I need you to please win this battle for me. So you go in with God. That's the only way you can be victorious. And that's the only way 20 years of oppression was turned over, because this time around, God went in to battle with the children of Israel. So as the Canaanite army is scattered all over the way and running helter-skelter, the prophecy is about to come True through the hands of Jael. So let's read her story starting from verse 16. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the army to Harasheth Hagoyim and all the army of Sisera fell by the edge of the sword and there was not a man left. So all of them, all, the whole army was finished. They were killed. They were totally gone, totally killed, totally. It was over. This was God had had enough, and this was it. Their time, their reign of terror was over. So it was only Sisera that was left, and he was left because he fled. He fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. Now remember, Sisera is the commander-in-chief under King Jabin. And that's the Canaanite king. And it's the Canaanites that were really oppressing the children of Israel. So there was peace. And that's a key thing to note there. There was peace between Jael's household and the king of Canaan. So Sisera thought that he was going into, he was now in friendly territory. He, he relaxed. He was, oh, he's been running and running. Everyone's dead and he's the only survivor. And now he's come to Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. And he thinks, oh, it's all good. I'm, I'm, yeah. And I'm in a friend zone now. So now, Jael in verse 18, she goes out to meet Sisera and she says to him, Turn aside, my lord, turn aside to me, do not fear. And when he had turned aside to her into the tent, she covered him with a rug. Okay, yesterday I said, do not underestimate a woman. Do not ever underestimate a woman. Hey, basically don't underestimate anyone, but a woman, when a woman is going to do something, she's going to do it well. Attention to detail. She covered him with a rug. She was hospitable. She brought him into her home. She treated him nicely. And Cicera was confidently in her tent because her home was a friendly home to the king of Canaan. So he thought he was no longer in enemy territory. He did not know that God had come upon this woman and God had called this woman and activated her for the purpose. He had activated her for a purpose. I was sitting together with a God girl today <laughs> and we were just chatting. And that was something that I brought up. You can just be living your life and you're living your life and you think it's your life. But when the call of God comes upon you, he's going to activate your purpose. That's what he did with JL. JL was neutral territory. Her husband, her home was the home. They were friends with the king of Canaan. They were just keeping the peace. They were neutral people. They were friends with Israel and friends with Canaan. They were just cool people. 
And she was cool until God activated her purpose. This was the time JL was created for. When God created her and formed her, this was the time he created her for. I hope you are listening. She was a regular woman until this moment. This was when God activated his purpose upon her. And as I said, anytime you're reading the Bible, be aware that God himself is a character. Some story happened behind the scenes where God ministered to JL that, hey, he put that thought in her. He brought it to fruition. And now she was going to implement that thought. That though she was a friend, her household was a friend to the king of Canaan. And yesterday she may have really been totally hospitable to Sisera. But today was a different day. Today was the day that her purpose was activated. So she brings him into her tent. She's hospitable, covers him with a rug. He's asking for a cup of water in verse 19. Please give me a little water. And remember, he's been running and he's really agitated. And uh, he's, he's, he's come to a place that he's ready to let down his guard. And he asks for water, but she doesn't give him water. No, she gives him milk. I'm telling you, this woman was very hospitable. She took care of this man. She didn't offer him water. She offered him milk. <laughs> milk, all right? And in verse 20, Sisera now tells her to stand in the door of the tent, and if any man comes and inquires of you and says, is there any man here? Tell that man no. That was his instruction to her. That was his instruction to her. He didn't know that the Spirit of God had already told this woman who he was. When God has activated you for a purpose, he's going to reveal things to you. This woman knew who this man was. She knew what God was telling her to do to this man. Even though she was going through the motions to invite him into her tent and she was being hospitable, she knew what she was about to do to this man. So his instruction was a waste of time because he was given instruction to who he thought was his friend. And yesterday she may have been his friend, but today she can't be his friend because God had activated his purpose on her life. All right, so... I just love how verse 21 just gets right down to it. After Sisera gives that instruction, verse 21, but JL, but JL, all right? She, he has given his instruction. That's not her business. But JL decided to do something else. JL Heber's wife took a peg of the tent and a hammer in her hand and went softly. She crept to him and drove the peg into his temples and into the ground, for he was fast asleep and exhausted, so he died. Excuse me. Excuse me. Please, round of applause to Jael, the brave one. Jael had an agenda from the beginning. You gotta be careful with people. They're people you think you know. They're people you think are your friends, but they have an agenda why they have come into your life. You need to be led by the Spirit of God. You need to ask God to surround you with His kind of people. Because Cicera relaxed because he thought he was in friendly territory. He let his guard down. This is a man that was oppressing the children of Israel for 20 years. So he was good. He was good as a military man. He knew the ins and outs. He was, a, he was, he was the man. But he totally let his guard down. And a woman, a woman woke up and was activated that day. God decided to use this woman to bring this man down because I can assure you, Cicera was proud. Hey, if you've been on top of the game for 20 years, you cannot be a humble person. Yeah, you can't be unless the Spirit of God is in you. This man did not have the Spirit of God in him, so I, I know he was proud. On top of the game for 20 years, all the children of Israel were terrified of Cicera. 
But because he was now in the friend zone, he relaxed. And he even relaxed to the point that he was ready to sleep just because this woman covered him. He thought, oh, she's covered me. She's offered me milk. He had no idea that she was plotting the best way to kill him. Because that milk made him drowsy. I can assure you it made him drowsy. That milk made him drowsy and accelerated what she needed to do. She had a hidden agenda. Be careful of people. It's not everyone around you that's your friend. It's not every Christian that's around you that is the right Christian. Be careful. If you are someone led by the Spirit of God who has a good relationship with God, people are not just going to easily take advantage of you because you're going to take everything to God and inquire of God. God, what about this person? God, what about this step I'm about to take? Please guide me. If you're that kind of person, it's going to be hard for people to take advantage of you. That's why a relationship with God is everything. Prophetess Deborah, as fully loaded as she was, had a solid relationship with God. But this is a woman, JL, that we're talking about tonight. She was activated. She had been neutral for years. She was the friend of Israel, friend of Canaan. But there's a day you'll have to make up your mind <laughs> who you're going to serve. If you're going to serve God all the way, or if you're going to serve the world all the way. Today, she had to make a decision. The enemy is here. This man is here. Am I going to stand with the God of Israel? Or am I just going to be neutral and let this man be a friend? This man that has oppressed the children of Israel for 20 years. And if she's someone neutral, she had Israelites that were her friends. She had Canaanites that were her friends. So this was a tough decision for her. Someone who's played neutral. But when the Spirit of God overtakes you and activates the reason why he created you, huh? he takes over. God is the boss. Never forget that God is the boss. You can plan your life. You can make your plans. But one day, he's going to activate the purpose he created you. And you better be alert to receive it and rise up and be the brave one. Because this woman was brave. She went from being the wife of Heber the Kenite. To a woman who made a decision to obey God come what may. Her husband wasn't home. She didn't even have time to think that. Oh this is going to tick my husband off. She's all about God has told me to do something. And I'm going to do it. She was a God pleaser. Is there any man pleaser in this group? Learn from JL tonight. Because when you take a stand for God, be ready to lose some people in your life. Be ready to even lose your marriage over it. Yes, be ready. She wasn't a woman that said, oh, I'm going to wait for my husband to come home and we'll kill him together. She went, she just went for it. Come what may. And let me tell you something. When you fulfill the purpose God has created for you, when you choose God first, when you seek him first... Everything else will be added to you. Everything. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid and say, oh, what, what's, what's Heber, my husband, going to think? What are my friends going to think? If she was sitting there thinking about all these things, she wouldn't have fulfilled her destiny. But when you say, God, you have called me to do this. It's kind of scary, but empower me to do it. And I'm trusting it as I do this. It's not going to backfire on me. And God will take care of you. She was a brave woman. She went from being a regular woman to being an extraordinary woman. JL, the brave one. Verse 22, And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, JL came out to meet him and said to him, Come, and I will show you the man whom you are seeking. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the peg was in his temples. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the bravery to take a hammer and a peg? And back then, these women were, you know, they lived... Children of, well, children of Israel, the Kenites. Back then, that was the nomadic era. So people lived in tents. They didn't have houses made out of bricks. Their homes were in tents. So they knew how to put a tent together. The tools in their hands are what you would use to stabilize your tent. Okay, you need a hammer and you need some nails and you hold the tent down into the ground. So, I mean, now she took it to, you know where the temples are on, on, on your head? Yeah, I'm touching mine right now. It's like right there on your head. 
this soft bone on your head, okay, to the side of your face. So this guy was covered up, sleeping like a baby after a glass of milk, and she did not even wait. There was no hesitation. She took the peg and drove it into his temple and hammered it. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this is like cold-blooded murder. I mean, it's crazy. Just look, you know, we try to get into the emotions of this woman. So try and imagine this is your JL moment. You're a regular woman who's probably never killed anyone in her life. And now you're taking down the captain of the army of Canaan, a great and mighty warrior. You're taking him down. Look, I'm going to tell you something right here. I know this woman was filled with the spirit of God in order to do what she did. You can't do this. You can't just raise up, wake up one day and go and kill somebody. The Spirit of God is leading you to fulfill His purpose, so God has to take over you. That's why you run into people who were incredibly shy, but when they surrender to the calling of God on their lives, the boldness comes upon them. I always use Peter as an example. Peter was a disciple of Jesus, right? He hung out with Jesus. He was close to Jesus. He saw Jesus and probably touched Jesus, right? But when it was time to acknowledge that he was a disciple of Jesus, he chickened out. Three times he denied Jesus. Three times. And Jesus prophesied that it would be so. But when did Peter change? Peter changed when Jesus had left the earth. And the Holy Spirit came in the book of Acts and came down upon the disciples in the upper room. Their lives were forever changed. You need the power of God to fulfill the purpose of God. You cannot fulfill the purpose of God without the power of God. And where is the power of God? In the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is propels you with power. When you go back and look at the story of Samson, and you'll see the Spirit of God came upon him. That's where the power is, in the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. So Peter was now bold. He was not the Peter that was denying Jesus anymore. He was totally bold. And for Jael to do this, I know the power of God came upon her because there was no hesitation. When God is upon you, there's no hesitation. There's no time for fear. You're just going to do it. You will do it because you must fulfill his purpose. And to fulfill his purpose, his power must come upon you. And that's what happened with the brave one. Okay, and look at how she boldly told Barak to come in and see. Come in. Yeah, she said, hey, look, look at the man you're looking for. You're running up and down looking for him. Um, he's here. He's dead. And so that prophecy that prophetess Deborah said that God would give the honor to a woman, God raised Jael up and gave the honor to her. And verse 23 says, So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel. You have to understand that by taking Sisera out, he was the commander-in-chief of the army. By taking him out, Jabin's power was gone because Jabin was the king, but he wasn't the enforcer. He wasn't the one going out on the battlefield. It was Sisera. And now that Sisera was gone, Jabin had no power anymore. He was subdued. He was finished because Sisera was dead. So who was the true oppressor of, of the children of Israel? It wasn't Jabin. It was Sisera. For 20 years, he had oppressed the children of Israel, but today was his final day. Hallelujah. And so the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. Of course, with Sisera out of the way, Jabin had no power anymore. So now the children of Israel, who were totally repented and back to God, God was with them. And the era of Jabin and Sisera was now over. And who accelerated that? Who implemented the purpose of God? Jail. The brave one. All right. So um, chapter five goes into when prophetess Deborah is worshiping God and narrating everything that has happened. And so we still see in verse 24. 
how Jael is honored in the worship song. Blessed above women will Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, be. Blessed she will be above women in the tent. He asked water, and she gave him milk. She brought forth butter in a magnificent dish. Okay, it's almost like a sassy way of saying, oh yeah, she got him. She got him good. She was being extra hospitable. She was extra nice to this man, but hey, she turned around in verse 26. She put her hand to the peg, and her her right hand to the workman's hammer, and with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smashed his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. At her feet he bowed. He fell. He lay down. At her feet he bowed. He fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead. All right, so, I mean, this was really a song that, almost sassy worship here, <laughs> really gives homage to jail that she job well done job what she did it well they went into details of how she did it attention to detail attention to detail that's where the strength of a woman is when you give us something to do uh, we're gonna do it well very very well no question no question and this was a man's job handed over to a woman just because the man was afraid Barak was afraid if you are afraid to fulfill why God has called you he's gonna raise someone else up God will use who he wants to use all right, so if you don't step up to be used by God, he's going to raise someone else. Someone who's ready to be a God pleaser, not a people pleaser. Not someone who's going to hesitate and say, oh, I can't do this because I'm married. I can't do this because I'm a mom. I can't do this because of my career. I can't. Do no, 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 no. God is not looking for those kind of people. He's looking for people who are sold out ready at any moment to do what he has called them to do, ready, available, committed. Those are the true children of God, sold out, all right? So what can we learn? I mean, there's so much to learn here, so much. Don't underestimate a woman, number one. God can use anyone, and he used Jael. She was very brave. She bravely carried this out. She bravely fulfilled the prophecy, despite what it may have shook up her household. We don't know what was the aftermath after that, but we can see in the worship song that she was honored. We can see that Israel had peace for 40 years. 40 years because they took out this oppressor, because Jael killed this oppressor. All right? So... What else can we learn from here? We should always be guarded up. It's not everyone who you think is your friend is your friend. It's not everyone who you think supports you actually supports you. You don't know the heart of a human being. Only God knows the heart. I mean, look at how hospitable she was. This oppressor, 20-year veteran oppressor, totally let his guard down. Totally. Someone like this should be <sighs> at that level. You can't relax. When you're in the military and we have some military God girls, you, you know, your God can never be down. What? What? Your God down? Once you put on that uniform, you know they're out to get you. And that's the way every child of God should be. The devil knows who his children are and he knows who the children of God are. So the devil is out to get you. And he's going to use anything and anyone to get you. And he specializes in using those who are closest to you. Because that's the easiest way to destabilize you. When your loved ones are the ones who are driving you crazy and betraying you, that's the easiest way to destabilize you. But if it's a stranger that hurts you, it's not as painful as if it's a loved one. It's not as painful. So the enemy uses them a lot. Uses the spouse, uses the children, uses the siblings, uses the parents. He's going to use your love, your best friend. Yeah, right. Make God your best friend. All right? Always be guarded up. The enemy is coming for you. And if he cannot get to you directly, he's going to use those that are close, closest to you. And you need to understand as a child of God that a battle is spiritual. So when... A loved one is being mean to you. You need to understand it's the devil working through that loved one. Just as the spirit of God is working through you, the spirit of the devil works through people. So don't take it personal. As hard as it is, understand what a spiritual attack is. That's why you need to be a praying woman like Prophetess Deborah. And for the, to, to access the power of God, it's in a praying life. 
It's in a praying life. Okay, so the devil can use anyone to destroy you. And God can use anyone to carry out his plan. So don't look at someone and think, oh, oh they're nothing. They'll never be anything. It's the worst mistake you can make. So Sarah walked into this tent and saw a powerless woman. He saw a household that was a friend to the king of Canaan. And he relaxed. Don't relax. He saw a woman. He saw a friend to the king of uh, Canaan. That's what he saw. But he didn't see her heart. You can never see the heart of a human being unless God reveals their intent to you. So as a God girl, you really need, you see a relationship with God is everything. It's God that leads you. It's God that directs you. If you're a child of God, you're not going to run into this statement of someone saying, Oh no, this tragedy happened because she was in the wrong place at the wrong time. The wrong place and the wrong time cannot happen to a child of God who is in a deep relationship with God. Because God is leading you. God is going to make it clear to you if you need to step out of your house that day. Haven't you noticed sometimes you're getting ready to go somewhere and then you just feel like, uh, you know what, I don't think I should go anymore. That's God leading you. So listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. If, if God is in charge of your life, if you're surrendered to him, you cannot be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You cannot because God will, God will keep you in his perfect peace. God will protect you where there is danger. He will protect you. He will. As long as he is making use of you and he's making use of you while you're alive. It's when you're when you're dead, well, you're dead and gone into heaven, hallelujah, by the grace of God. But while you're alive and God is making use of you, you cannot be in the wrong place at the wrong time if you're in tune with God. So God girls, go and work on your relationship with God. Before you take a step in your life, inquire of God. Some of you have told you to go on a destiny fast. Some of you are looking for direction in your life. Go and seek God's face on it. If you're at a point in your life, you don't know what the next step is to take. Don't wait for your pastor to declare a fast. Go and fast it out and say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Lord, reveal me to me. I need to know the next step in my life. The purpose of God must come to pass. And he will use you. You may have planned out your life and you think, oh, well, I'm just living my life. I love God. I work in church. I go to church. That's not it. He may have raised you for a moment, a JL moment, where yesterday you were ordinary, but today you're extraordinary. This is the day he has activated the purpose he created you. So God is awesome. Yield to him. Have a relationship with him. Be a warrior for God. All right? Be a warrior for God. And God will use you mightily. Trust God. Love God. Be a praying woman. Be brave. And you are brave by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask for the Holy Spirit to be close to you. Ask for the Holy Spirit to pour himself upon you. If any of you are shy and you're wondering how you're going to fulfill God's calling on your life, ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how you will fulfill his calling on your life. If you have the Holy Spirit flowing through you, he takes over you. You're not going to be shy. He's going to use you. You're not going to have hesitation. You're not going to be afraid. You'll step into your purpose magnificently. Magnificently. Royally, like Esther did. She stepped into her purpose. But before she did, she fasted, right? It was in that fasting she received the power of God to step in boldly. To get that boldness to do what God has called you to do. You need God. So, if any of you admire JL, know that there's a JL in you. Yes, there's a JL in you and there's a JL in me. All these women that we have studied, identify with them because God is using women mightily. He's used them since the beginning of time and he's using them right now. There's a Deborah in you. There's a JL in you. But you cannot discover these aspects of you until you are connected to God. So connect with him. Develop a friendship with the Holy Spirit. Seek God on your own. 
Just look for him. Seek him diligently. You will find him. And once you have found him and he has revealed what he has created you for, when you have received the identity that God has placed upon you, look, it doesn't matter what any man does to you because you know that your identity is in Christ. You know who God has called you to be. That woman, that beautiful woman that he has purposed you to be. That strong woman, woman of strength, bravery, valor. Come on now. When you know what God has created you for, there's no time to hesitate and be afraid. His peace will take over you. His strength will take over you. God is awesome. Find him tonight. Get on your knees tonight and say, Holy Spirit, take over me. I'm sorry for how I've led my life. I surrender right now. You use JL. You use Prophetess Deborah. Use me. Activate the gifts in my life. I want to serve you. I want to have a meaningful life. A meaningful life is when I am doing what you created me to do. Lord Jesus, take over me. Spirit of God, take over me. Come upon me now. I am yours. That's all you need to do each and every day declare to the Lord I am yours Lord use me for your glory and it will come to pass this is Pastor Bella Alex Nosage Lagos Nigeria ultimate God girl God bless you